Right, let's try that again. Welcome back to the show, guys. We're at the range. It's very windy, okay? Perfect day for shooting a new rifle. We're gonna shoot the 7300 Win Mag. Look how bananas this thing looks. <laughs> I am super pumped. I've waited for this rifle for 24 months, so I'm pumped. The wind is certainly not gonna stop me. So first things first, got a break in the barrel, as you guys know, so I'm gonna do one round clean, two rounds clean. I've done a complete video of how to do that. Um, I'm gonna move, so we're out the, out the wind here a little bit for you guys. Uh, let me just back this out. Whoops, other way. Um, so this sound should be a little bit better uh, now. Let me stand over here. So uh, yeah, so I'm one round clean, two round clean, and rinse and repeat until uh, we get to five rounds. Okay, then I'm gonna shoot some just sort of thumb suck loads, 180 grain ELDM. I'm using Retumbo. I'm not gonna get into the load recipe or anything like that. Yeah, so without further ado, you guys are gonna watch the intro. I'm gonna sort of warp you into the future. Um, while I break in the barrel, it's obviously a time consuming process, but it is what it is. It's a Tuesday morning that is kind of what my job is now so i'm super fortunate and i couldn't do that without you guys so once again thank you for being here if you're new and you haven't subscribed please do so down here and i'll see you guys after the intro i'm gonna get the rifle out get it all set up it should be a lot of fun i'm really excited to feel what the recoil is going to be like um, but more on that later let's go So the first six rounds are in. I'm starting to shoot a little group just with the break-in process at 100 meters. A couple of things to note here. Um, I don't have a muzzle brake on, so it's kicking a little bit more. It probably doesn't look like a lot on the video, but it's kicking more than I'm used to on sort of a 6.5 Creedmoor type of thing or the 223, which I've been shooting a lot of. So the reason I don't have a muzzle brake on, and um, don't worry about all the little things blowing away, how I'm gonna collect all those just now, is because when I'm pushing the cleaning rod through every time and I want to push all that gunk into my muzzle brake. So for the purpose of the exercise, I have taken the muzzle brake off. Now, this is obviously a big Magnum caliber as I showed you guys just now. It is pretty, it's quite a, it's quite a heavy bullet um, for, for the caliber and we're pushing it really fast. We're gonna set up a chronograph just now to actually get speeds on some of the sort of thumb suck loads I've done. I'm also wearing gloves cause that's just easier than to try and get all this black stuff underneath your nails later. Um, Right, so I've got a couple of more rounds to put down range uh, to finish breaking in the barrel. Then I'm going to let it cool down. We're going to shoot some loads. Another thing to note is I left my rear bag at home. Now, 
I obviously shoot the pint size game changer from Armageddon gear and the reason I left it at home is because the last time I was here we shot an NRL match in the pouring rain. I'm going to show you guys some video of that. It's cell phone video because I didn't want to bring out the big camera but it was absolutely hosing. So instead of sort of packing all my stuff together for the next range trip I put the Armageddon game changer in like a drying station type thing that I sort of shimmied at home and I left it there. So what we're doing today is we're using my med kit as sort of a rear bag so probably when we do a low development the groups aren't going to be as good as they could be but it should give me a really good indication of what sort of the rifle is capable of another thing to note i'm shooting a single stage bix and andy taxport pro that is set ultra light okay i'm used to the two stage on my 7 arsum that's now been sold obviously um so this is taking a little bit of getting used to the first round was like oh <laughs> it just went um Obviously I was on paper when we were trying to do that so but it is lighter than I'm used to and obviously there's no first stage so if you're interested in Bix and Andy triggers at all you guys can use the code impact at bulletcentral.com that's going to give you $30 off your next Bix and Andy trigger so I'm going to finish this up and then let's shoot some loads and our sheep friends are arriving so they're going to be in for a little bit of a kick <laughs> So, uh, slight change of plan, um, luckily I brought the rain boots so I'm going to have to change my target to shoot across this way, but we're almost done with sort of breaking in the barrel and then we'll start shooting some groups, but yeah, the sheep uh, <laughs> tend to show up every now and then. So as I was sort of about to leave the house, something said to me like, Pete, dude, just take your water stevels. Um, and that's going to be Afrikaans word of the day, water stevels, okay. So a stevel is a shoe um, and water is water. So they're pretty similar. Because um, yeah, this water has come into this section of the farm where the new target is. And um, I will, if I walk through there normally, my feet would be absolutely soaking wet. So these guys do come in handy. Um, pretty cool that I have multiple shooting angles here. So that when something like this happens, the show can go on. I could probably shoot in that direction because the sheep are kind of there but when I'm here they're definitely more off to that way so let's go do that uh, set up a different target and uh, shoot those loads with a rear a rear medical kit um, yeah shoot great uh, the recoil was way better with the muzzle brake on a couple of things to note when I plan on running this in sort of long-range matches yes I'm gonna keep it for now I know initially we said it was solved unfortunately uh, COVID got to a lot of people and the guy who was gonna take it can't take her anymore but she will be available down the line again um, I'm gonna shoot it very seldomly in maybe one or two long-range matches we'll see what the future holds but importantly when I plan on shooting it in matches and that's why it's in the ACC as it is now um, I will be adding weight to it now that's the wonderful thing about the MDT chassis is that it's so modular like you know if it's kicking me a little bit much I can add more weight find that balance point to exactly get that recoil where I wanted to at the moment it's very manageable. I'm very impressed. It's much better than it was without the muzzle brake just now. So yeah, with regards to the weight, you can obviously add weight internally in the ACC and you can add additional weights externally. So I'll probably just for now go with the internal weights because I quite like how the ACC is painted up and everything. I'm going to see how it holds up just with the internal weights recoil wise, how it handles. If needed, I'll add some more um, external weights. At the moment, I'm shooting at max power on 27 with that Razor. At 110 yards, we zero at 100 meters, so just over 100, um, around about 110 yards. And I'm seeing where those bullets are hitting. So in terms of following up shots, quite easy in its current configuration but obviously I want to maximize on that 
if we plan on shooting this out in matches we'll probably back out that magnification quite a little ways um but yeah so currently just not too bad uh, I quite like choosing days like this to come and do low development or breaking in new barrels when it's a little bit colder outside the barrel tends to cool down way quicker um, so that's kind of why we're out here on sort of a an overcast day and yeah um, so I'm gonna do a little bit more shooting I think we got still uh, we got four more loads to run um, and then I'll take you guys down to the target behind the target <laughs> it's like a hole like this um, where these things are, are hitting the ground there, so it's quite cool. Anyway, um, barrel should be ready to go for the next five, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to show you guys a little bit more of a front angle without exploding this camera, so let's do that. Okay, cool. So we're finished shooting some groups. Um, looks good. I kind of ran out of memory space on this camera. I stole a memory card from the lab radar, so I couldn't get speed on everything, but I did do speed on sort of those last two strings. Um, and we ended up getting an average speed on both strings of 3,100 feet per second. Well, not exactly that, 3,098 feet per second with a 180 grain 7 mil. Um, so that's pretty good, pretty pretty good. Oh, do not drop the camera in this one. Uh, let's navigate this section first. See, this is why we bring water stables because, yeah, it's quite muddy. Um, right, our target's up there. Um, right, let's see what we got. Right, uh, Okay, so we sort of have to climb up this thing. You guys will be blown away by the size of this freaking, let me just see, everything's fine at the back there. How hard the seven mil hits into the dirt behind this target. Let me show you. Oh, do not fall, there we go. Some perspective. This is what the terrain looks like. And then when we come over to behind our target, uh, yeah, that's pretty rough. Okay, so. This is what we got, uh, not wonderful. Again, I'm shooting off sort of a medical bag, so not ideal. So five rounds, five rounds, five rounds, five rounds, five rounds, five rounds, and five rounds. Hmm, 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 what to do, what to do. So, what? Da, 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 da. Right, heading back. Um, Results not wonderful, not exactly what I was hoping for. This sort of one here by my pinky is sort of workable. What I plan on doing now is I'm gonna look for the group with the lowest vertical dispersion. I'm gonna reload that one, play with my seating depth a little bit, okay? Come back out um, and then validate those loads. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I suggest you do that. Um, I'm gonna have my little thing up here because then you'll actually be able to sort of get updates and I post more regularly uh, over the fence. Woo, ninja style. Oh, sh <laughs> nearly bailed. Okay, cool. We're back. As I was saying, follow me on Instagram. You will see some updates with regards to to this stuff. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to probably pick that load and that load. If I throw out that shot there, because as I was saying, I'm shooting off a medical bag. It's really not ideal. Um, so I'm going to just reload those come double check them play with the seating there for a little bit but if you're interested in reloading or want to learn more about reloading we are busy filming my reloading course so i'm going to leave the details to that down below too where i do a complete deep dive on the whole reloading process stuff we really can't speak about on youtube with regards to their t's and c's 
Guys, I'm gonna give a massive shout out to MDT for being our channel sponsor for this video. That chassis freaking rocks. I can't wait to add some weight to it. That's probably also what I'll do. Next time it'll be heavier, it'll be weighted down. I'll have a proper rear bag and we're really gonna be able to squeeze laser-like accuracy. Again, the weather, the wind, everything today wasn't ideal for doing what we're doing. But kind of good is better than perfect, right? Um, so that's sort of why we're out here. So thanks again, MDT, for sponsoring today's episode. Guys, if you want to shop chassis systems like the one at the back there, the ACC, head on over to mdttech.com. I will see you guys in the next video. If you haven't checked out part one or part two or part three, for that matter, of our Frontier Hunt, I'm going to leave a little playlist here. And a new video should have been out a couple of days ago with the last part. So thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next one.